of electricity, the search for the origin of magnetism often raises the question, what happens in a weak magnet if it is subjected to the influence of a strong magnet? This flag-waving device, which seems to have the jitters, is designed to answer that question and to show a phenomenon too small and too rapid to be seen. In any magnetic substance, magnetism resides in certain electrons which are bound to atoms. These electron magnets are here represented by small Alnico bar magnets to which flags with dark and light faces are attached. These magnets swing on pivots. In any magnetized body, electrons line up in one direction due to their interaction. In this model, they line up because every north pole attracts the south pole of the next magnet. This line of bar magnets represents a weak magnet. The strong magnet consists of a number of coils through which an electric current is passed. The current sets up a magnetic force equal to that of a strong horseshoe magnet. When current is applied, the bar magnets, starting at one end, begin to turn. As one turns and its north pole swings round, it makes the south pole of the following one do the same. This propagation continues along the row and is a true representation of the action of electron magnets when influenced by a strong magnetic field. By changing the direction of the current in the coils, the action can be reversed. Laboratory measurements indicate that today's fastest airplane would have to fly a hundred times faster to approach the speed of these electrons in magnetic material. To be or not to be, that is the question. But your question is probably to be or not to be what? To be or not to be magnetically attracted is the answer. But wait, we're ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the beginning. This device consists of an Alnico horseshoe magnet, which is clamped firmly in place to provide a source of magnetic attraction for a strip of Curie metal, a special alloy which is fixed to a free-swinging support. The magnetic attraction between the two is quite strong, as can be seen by the pressure required to break them apart and the tendency of the Curie metal to swing back to the magnet. Now let's fill a small container with cold water and allow it to be soaked up by a sponge. That done, we'll place the holder in position under the Curie strip. And now let's light the wicks of an alcohol burner. Pause an instant for the flames to rise then place the unit under the Alnico magnet so that its flames strike the strip of Curie metal. Both metals were at room temperature, but as the flames heat the free-swinging strip to a higher degree, its ability to be magnetically attracted becomes weaker. So weak, as you can see, that there is no longer enough attraction to overcome the force of gravity on the Curie strip. But since it fell on the cold sponge, it will gradually cool, and as it cools, its power of being magnetically attracted will increase until it is greater than the force of gravity. Then back will fly the strip. When relatively cold, Curie metal is strong in magnetic attraction. When relatively hot, it's weak in magnetic attraction. Because of this sensitivity to temperature change, Curie metal will have valuable applications in industrial plants. These metal gears, similar in design, material, and construction, reveal one very fundamental difference when struck with a hammer. One gear is resonant, rings like a bell. The other is non-resonant. Mechanical vibrations created within the one gear when struck cause it to ring. These vibrations in the second gear are damped by a small metal ring inserted in a flange on each side of the gear. This ring checks the mechanical vibrations and so deadens the sound. Quiet gears of this type help to eliminate noise from machinery.
In India, during the dry season, lawns are still watered by this crude and inefficient method of sprinkling. Natives draw the water manually from wells, pour it into animal skin bags, and then, before too much has leaked out, hurriedly splash the water upon the parched grass. In contrast, here is Neela Park, the lighting center of the world, where lawns are sprinkled scientifically. At the flick of a switch, efficient electrically driven pumps quickly and easily force water through underground pipes to systematically placed nozzles. From these, the water cascades in an even fine spray, keeping the grass green and fresh. This tube is designed primarily for the measurement or detection of very small electric currents. Constructed with utmost care to give extremely good insulation and high vacuum, this tube, because of certain features in its design, such as the use of quartz supports for the grid structure, can detect currents as minute as a hundredth of a millionth of a billionth of an ampere, or about 60 electrons a second. Though it can amplify current 250,000 times, its voltage amplification is less than one. It is therefore used with another tube, a thyrotron, which gives the necessary amplification. Minute electrical charges picked up by the aerial, held by insulators between the two uprights of this equipment, are passed directly to the grid of the tube. If the charge is positive, the lamps will light. If negative, they will go off. By rubbing an amber rod with felt, a very weak negative charge can be generated on it. If this rod is brought near the aerial, its negative charge will induce a positive charge on the tube and the lamps light. Withdraw the rod and they go off. The tube is detecting these minute charges induced by the rod and is causing the thyrotron to turn the lamps on. If now we rub an ebony rod with felt, thereby creating a positive charge, and bring it near the aerial, its induced negative charge will make the lamps go off. Withdraw the rod and the lamps come on. In both of these cases, the currents are so weak that no other tube could detect them. By using measuring instruments, the actual value of such weak currents can be measured and information valuable to electrical engineers made known. This is Come not on. Dad playing with Junior's Stop. toy train, but a simple demonstration Come of on. control. Control by sound, Stop. in which a telephone transmitter, vacuum now. tube relay, and toy electric Stop. train are the principal Stop. characters. As you Stop. can see, the train Stop. apparently Stop. understands the engineer's command. As a matter of fact, Stop. it does. Briefly, now. this is the explanation. Stop. Sound impulses Stop. striking the transmitter Stop. are converted into Stop. tiny Stop. electrical impulses. Through wires, Back these minute now. electrical impulses are carried to the apparatus in the Come center on. of the track. Here, these weak electrical impulses are increased Stop. by a vacuum tube Back amplifier and passed Stop. on to an electromagnetic Come relay, which is so arranged that two impulses move the train forward, one impulse Stop. stops it, and three impulses Back send it backward. Stop. Come on. Stop. Come on. Since impulses alone control the train, the actual Back words aren't important. Any simple sound will Back serve the purpose. Stop. Come on. Two. Two, two, two. Two. Two, two. By the use of vacuum tube control systems, minute quantities of power may two. be used to control very large two, amounts two. of power. Such control systems two. are, therefore, a two, great two. advantage to modern industry. Two. Two, two, two.